Hey guys, I wanted to do a little video because um, 17 years ago I took some machining classes, learned a little bit about running a lathe for one semester, then the second semester we got maybe a few weeks on a milling machine. So there's my big beautiful Klausing. Um, oh, I should be ashamed, I don't even know. 6913 lathe love it had to rebuild the clutch when i first got it but it runs like a tank it leaks a little tiny bit not much the master cylinder in there is shot well not shot leaks it's certainly not shot because it runs fine and it does go through all the rpms this is the the main beast that i do a lot of my work on for harmony and um it is a solid piece of iron. I've been told by so many people that this is a beautiful machine, and the more I use it, the more I learn with it, the more I do realize how amazing it is. It's got 36 inches of travel in the X, 12 or 13 actually, I think, in the Y, and then like, uh, holy crap, 20, 20, three maybe in the Z. I don't know. I'd have to look at my Linux CNC table, but <sighs> you guys are going to laugh at me. So please, you know, have your fun. Haha. -ha. I needed to machine two of these. This is quarter inch normal steel plate and just half inch hole, one inch hole, another half inch hole. Did it up on Fusion 360 and burned the crap out of my bits. I mean, just destroyed. Look at that thing. Destroyed the one, flipped it over, destroyed the other end. Now these are cheap Chinese bits, thank goodness, so I'm only paying like three dollars a pop for, you know, that's a buck fifty per end. Um, by the third one, I was doing okay. This one's this one's still got a really nice edge on it. Um, it's still good. And in fact, it actually cut like butter on the third one. I couldn't believe how nice it cut. I started with what I was, I don't have that little um, indicator inside of there because I'd have to like unmount the entire motor from the top and go fishing for it, find it and figure out where it's broken and repair that just to get the little indicator needle in. I do it by sound. I run it up the whole way and then back it off and try and guess what I'm at. And it's not the most precise thing in the world, but I think I can gauge within probably 300 RPM, 400 RPM where I land. Most of you guys are probably cringing though because when you run your machines you do it so precise that you don't have to worry about it. Um, I don't have that option here, so I started way too fast and burned up the first bit then I backed it off and still burned up the second one backed it way off so I probably was around 2500 rpm when I started the second time I was probably around 2000 rpm the third time when I finally got it to work right I'm probably guessing I was around 1300 rpm maybe 1200 rpm I really backed it off a lot and it cut like butter. I couldn't believe it. It cut through that steel without any hesitation, any noise. It, it was like it wasn't even cutting through steel. It was like it was just cutting through wood. It amazed me. I thought for a little bit that my cheap Chinese mills were the problem. You know, I only pay a buck fifty per end mill. I mean, when you're it's three dollars per double ended one. Back when I got these. Um, I don't know, I'd like to find 50 more of them on eBay somewhere, so I could use help, suggestions, I don't know, tricks, because I took 10 years with some big long breaks in there because of life events, but 10 years just getting this machine up and running correctly, and now to actually learn how to be a machinist and do it efficiently is a bit of a challenge. So, here, well, Harmony's on its side. Sorry for jumping the camera around. But, um, have the top end ready. <clears throat> so, it's going to get a 
plate up there with the shaft collar. So right now, the plan is that's gonna be together. The plate's gonna be locked to the upper and lower supports. And then this will be welded all the way around. And then I'll probably do set screws, maybe three set screws in here with a dimple that I'll make into the shaft. The good news is if I screw this up and it doesn't quite work like I expect, then I'll just get a new one inch steel shaft from the machine shop and try again. But for now, that's the best guess that I have of how to do a positive lock on Harmony and get my shaft locked to the upper and lower supports. And then, um, you know, I'll cut this to length after I get everything locked in and then start mounting it into the frame that I have all welded up and ready to go. I um, have done a little modification of this since you saw the last silly video. And I purchased, oh yeah, this works like a champ. So right now I just had the chuck, you know, the three jaw chuck coming into this. I had um, flattened three sides on it. Don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there you can. So one, two, three. And the idea was that would be sticking out at 90 degrees, but I didn't like how far out it stuck and, you know, as soon as you start getting out from the center of rotation, your weight increases exponentially. So I ordered a pair of 90 degree angle bevel gears and one's going to be on here and then the other will be on the, on the drill. So I'm going to mount the drill in here this way. It'll be mounted right alongside, held securely in place, and then the bevel gears will drive the, the main piece right here that then drives the furling so that's the plan to keep everything in and help it keep you know the balance of harmony nice keep the the weight towards the center and then on the opposite side under here I could put the battery to kind of offset the weight and it should make it a lot easier than having a stupid drill sticking way out here you know 10 inches um, but I need <laughs> <laughs> some guidance and some assistance if anyone has some good tricks. I know Fusion 360 is supposed to actually have the speeds and feeds built into it, but you know, I'm probably not putting things into it that it needs, like the correct material or I, I don't know. I, you know, I'm all self taught when it comes to this stuff and what I learn on YouTube a little bit, but uh, and the forums, but. I want to be able to sit here and throw a piece of steel in and just turn it into exactly what I'm after without uh, all the crazy trouble I have, you know, with my speeds and feeds. And Fusion 360 is supposed to have that, but I must be doing something wrong because it's got my, like, for this little tiny program that I wanted to do, it was saying 25 or 2800 RPM and you know, it's like the inches per minute travel is really, I don't know. <laughs> now, maybe it's because I'm using mist rather than flood cooling. These are things that as a novice machinist, I don't know. And maybe things would be better if I was flood cooling, but there's no freaking way I'm flood cooling on this in my basement because that would be everywhere. That's going to have to wait for a dedicated machine like a Tormach or a Haas mini mill before I get into flood cooling. For now, this guy's gonna be mist cooling, which probably means speeds that have to be only one quarter of what they are, but um, I don't know. I'm open to tricks and anything you guys have to offer. It'd be nice to have some of you who live near Hershey PA to hang out with and help me with some of the more simple things that you probably know how to do and understand if you've been a machinist all your life, but you know, I'm going to slowly keep acquiring my milling bits and 
I don't want to burn through them just because of stupidity. I've got maybe, I don't know, six more of those 5 16th end mills, double ended end mills. So it'd be nice to not have them be chewed up as much as they are. Um, let me think here. There's Sorry, I hit the pause button. There's a number of things that I have to do yet to get Harmony up and running in the test rig, but um, for the main part, it's going to be finishing off the little bit of welding and mounting. Just, you know, getting these pieces times two. There's one on the top, one on the bottom, and then uh, then I can start worrying about putting it into some sort of holder that's going to go on the bottom part to support the weight vertically and then the little top triangle over there will actually that's the holder the top triangle will be on top and it's just going to have two axial bearings are they axial radial radial bearings just to take the um the torque from Harmony and, and hold it vertically aligned. And then the thrust bearing will be down there to take the weight. So that and figuring out a good coupling for, sorry for the movement here, this, because I don't wanna do any crazy things like try and weld it to the, the generator. But this, I don't know, maybe it's standard on wind turbine generators is just a three quarter inch, three quarter by 16 thread. So I've got to make something uh, to join that together with the one inch shaft that I'm coming down. And I was going to make something like a, a spider coupler there. So a little bit of welding, a little bit of fabrication and imagineering to finish this stuff up. But um, yeah, just trying to pull it all together at this point. You know, some good work over the Christmas holiday should be a nice way to finish up what I need to, and then maybe I'll be actually ready to start testing Harmony's performance out in different wind conditions. All right, I've babbled way longer than I thought I would. 13 minutes is plenty. Um, Totally open to anyone who's got some good machining experience and willing to help. I know a few of you over the um, past year have offered, but um, speeds and feeds and I don't know. It's, you know, I know there's much more art to it than there is science for the old timers, especially. Uh, there is science behind it, but it feels like there's more art to it than science. And Fusion 360 is full on the science of it, so I'm sure I'm just not using it correctly to let Fusion 360 determine all my speeds and feeds for me. <laughs> so, suggestions welcome. All right, guys, I'm gonna log off here, sign off. You like those shower curtains, don't you? I know you guys want some of those up in your living room too, yeah? They keep the chips from going out everywhere because they do try and go everywhere. So I like the shower curtains. They help. All right. Take care, guys. Be good. Happy holidays if I don't do another video before Christmas, but uh, I'm hoping to get some good work done here in these next coming weeks. Take care.